Hello guys, my name is Rushikesh Khade and I am from COEP at Shivajinagar in Pune. As part of a research based learning program, one of our professors at the mechanical department, Abhishek Patange sir, has asked us to study and present a paper. Numerical methods of approximation is the concerned subject and each of our papers will have the application of one of the methods. In this paper, I will be using the modified Newton Raphson method. Now, the topic of the paper is design of longitudinal cooling fin of minimum volume. This paper was published on in the Elsewhere Journal uh, in 2015 by two authors of the National Kaohsiung University of Applied Sciences in Taiwan. That is the paper uh, that has been referenced at the end too. Now motivation of the topic lies in the fact that extended surfaces are quite an important deal to the thermal engineering departments. Whenever we talk about heat exchangers or uh, even the cylinders, engine cylinders on your two-wheelers, you must have seen some fins that come out of those cylinders. Now those fins are nothing but surfaces that are extended from the body so that they can increase the surface area of the body and ultimately increase the rate of heat transfer. So increasing the rate of heat transfer, uh, we will require increase of surface area. But that also means uh, we have to increase the volume of that uh, body which means that we will require more material. So more material will also require more cost. In order to minimize the cost and make it more economic, we will need to optimize the problem and uh, get a solution which gives us minimum cost, uh, that is minimum volume and maximum rate of heat transfer. So that is the motivation and objective is to, uh, like I said, minim minimize the volume of the longitudinal fin for a given rate, rate of heat loss and for a given base temperature. So now in this paper, we will have the given data as the rate of heat loss and the base temperature. We will have these two values and given these, we will find the minimum volume. Next up, uh, that is the, the flowchart shows the basic methodology of the presentation in the paper. Fins have been popular since the late 1960s and uh, various studies have already been done on it. The paper gives an overlook of these and moves on to the problem statement. We will be minimizing the volume of a longitudinal fin for a given rate of heat loss and base temperature like I said. That is the problem statement. And further, they plot the shape of the fin using a spline. This shape is then optimized by the modified newton raphson method. Now splines is something I will talk about later on. It is actually the most important part of this paper. Further, the newton raphson comes in where the volume has to be optimized. And calculating these results and comparison with the previous methods, this is also quite important because uh, at the end, the authors claim that this method is uh, better than any of the uh, methods that have been proposed earlier. And further considerations like whether this can be used for other shapes of the fin or not has also been considered at the end. Moving on, plotting the spline of the fin. Now the spline, it is a mathematical concept. You must have heard about a curve fitting or fits of data curves. Whenever we have a certain points on x, y plane, we draw a curve that fits best between these points. However, this is not very useful for predictions by interpolation or extrapolation. Suppose you want to have the temperature prediction of the next day and you have the data for the past month. So if you draw the best fit curve uh, between these data points, you won't get an accurate prediction. But splines, if you draw a spline, the property of the spline is that it should pass through all the data points. It cannot skip any data points just because, just because we want the best fit curve. The spline must pass through all those data points and at the same time it has to be a smooth curve. So this is used for predictions for using interpolation or extrapolation. So a spline is mathematically it is basically a polynomial function and it has a set of constraints. Now these constraints uh, in this problem are going to be the control points. The control points are going to decide the position of the spline actually uh, the control points will decide how the shape of the spline will run through so if you see in the right diagram the red dots are going to be the control points and the blue line that is the fin shape so the control points if i change the position of the control point ultimately the shape of the fin will also get changed so if i 
uh, optimize the position or if I uh, get a get an optimum solution for the position of the control point then I'm going to get the minimum uh, the shape of the fin for minimum volume and we are going to plot these control points using Newton Raphson method now if the number of variables and uh, constraints are seen then we can solve an equation if you read the paper you will find the mathematical analysis of how they arrive to the actual functions now here I will only focus on the numerical analysis uh, firstly if you see the graph again each control point on the right side right hand side each control point has two degrees of freedom uh, they can move in the x direction or in the y direction but the first one the point p1 and the last one the point p5 they however have only one degrees of freedom each as they lie on the y and x axis respectively so if we have uh, suppose five points like in this diagram five control points then i'm going to have twice of five that is ten minus two so i will be having eight degrees of freedom so if i can come up with uh, the same number of constraints then i will get a solution so the paper comes up with a method to account for all these constraints for a general number of control points say m so like it is mentioned uh, in this point for m control points there are 2m minus 2 variables of optimization so using some complicated mathematics the authors come up with a method to account for all these constraints they come up with these number of constraints and they arrive at an equation now this equation is going to give us a position of a control point as an output and now we apply the newton raphson method to this equation this is where the newton raphson part comes in now we assume the position of the control point and then check for the initial guess uh, is correct or not so now we are going to go through this algorithm this flowchart this is basically what the newton raphson method looks like and suppose for a given length of uh, the fin say 0.1 meters i am going to take any initial guess of the position of the control point any x coordinate and any y coordinate i will put it through this flowchart i will check whether the initial guess is correct or not if it is then i will move on and keep on finding the next best position for the control point uh, that is finding the x of k plus 1 now once i go on finding the next best position uh, ultimately uh, it will converge slowly to the actual position of the control point and once i have a reasonable approximation of uh, whether the control point is approximately at the exact location then i can stop doing these iterations and then i can get out of those loops and then x of k plus 1 and y of k plus 1 is going to be one control point now repeat this till xk is equal to length of fin now what i mean by that is once i get the position of one control point i'm going to have to go back to the length of the fin and choose say 0.2 as the value now and once i get 0.2 i can i have to take another initial guess and that initial guess has again run to be to be run through this uh, algorithm so for another initial guess i will get another control point then i will go back and choose another length of the fin and take one more initial guess of the control point so this will be my third control point so like this i have to plot several number of control points so it is kind of tedious if you see carefully uh, to go through this algorithm again and again for each control point so for that actually the classical method of newton raphson is not been used and the modified one is used in this paper so what the difference between these two is that the update of xi is xi minus fx upon f dash of x where fx is our uh, function representation but uh, the converging of this uh, new classical newton raphson method it might not be always as fast as you want it to be so and in this uh, case obviously there are a lot of iterations to be done and that too for each control point so we need a fast converging method so the authors have come up with this modified method and they define a function ux is fx upon f dash of x and now the update of xi is xi minus ux upon u dash of x so if you take a little bit of uh, consideration uh, you will see that it kind of gives us a double magnification factor and we are going to ultimately converge to the root of the equation faster as compared to the classical one so it uh, to get a faster converging to the root and to get uh, the solution quickly uh, the modified newton raphson method has been used 
now for the solution the solution uh, is uh, the solution like i said we get the control points as the output and once we optimize it using newton raphson then we get the shape of the spline by simply passing the spline through all these points now uh, the previous works uh, have been done by Ernst Schmidt the German scientist uh, who actually kickstarted this all of this uh, studying in the fins of the extended surfaces uh, he popularized it in the late 1900s and the recent study of uh, extended surfaces was done by Azarkash in 2010 now that study was by far the best one as far as the results were concerned However, uh, the further comparison we are going to see, it will show that it, our method is actually better than the previous ones. So if you see the comparison in these graphs, if you see the left graph, the fin profile, the red curve shows the profile plotted by Azarkash. And the blue dotted line, it shows the profile plotted by this paper itself. So clearly you can see the difference between them. And if you see the right hand side graph, that is the temperature distribution over the length of the fin. So if you see the uh, triangles and the crosses, the blue and the red line, the line, if you see uh, carefully observe the uh, part at the end of the graph, the line slightly decreases downwards. It, it's tending downwards. And the black line, which is Azarkash's temperature distribution, it slightly, slightly tends to go upwards. So the, what it means is that the temperature at the end of the fin is going to be uh, less than that of Azarkash. So that is why uh, uh, this paper pro uh, proposes that it is a better method than Azarkash's at least. Because we are getting a better temperature uh, reduction in the fin length. By the way, the base temperature uh, of the fin is going to be 500 Kelvin in this case because the length, the base temperature is basically the temperature for a length of fin equal to zero. So in this case, it is 500 as it is seen in the graph. And for a given rate of heat loss, we will plot this graph, which will give the minimum uh, volume of the fin. So that basically, uh, that uh, is the conclusion of the paper. And in this work, like we had set out to do, uh, set out to achieve our objective, we have achieved a minimum volume fin uh, for a given rate of heat loss and for a given base temperature. The proposed method also shows to be efficient and accurate to find the minimum volume for the given rate of heat loss and expected base temperature. Also, it can be used for other shapes of the fins. The authors have not elaborated much on this part, but they have proposed that they can use it for other shapes of the fins. And for the references, uh, these two are the names of those authors who have uh, presented this paper in the Elsewhere journal. If you want to know more about it, you should definitely check it out. They will show you in uh, very much detail about how they actually arrive at those equations. A lot of mathematics is involved in it. And they will also, also show how the uh, initial guesses are plugged in in the equation and the optimization is done. And the second reference that is numerical methods for engineers. That is uh, the textbook that we use at COIP for uh, studying various numerical methods of uh, approximations. So that's it for the presentation guys. If you have any doubts, please ask us and feel free to uh, post it in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching.